Well then guys, so this is the biggest pulsar and what's giving it those credentials is of course that engine. The 250cc single cylinder oil cooled engine puts out 24.5 PS of power, 21.5 Newton meters of torque. Uh, it's still a two valve head and you can see the oil cooler right there. And it's made it to a five speed gearbox. The engine oil capacity is about two liters. Uh, if you see what looks like the perimeter frame from the NS is actually isn't. It's got a tubular frame inside. This is just a panel and it's got a tubular frame. The engine is still the stress member, uh, but it's an all new frame. It's an all new engine. It doesn't uh, uh, carry forward anything from the previous models, but it still comes with a twin spark ignition. Uh, that's a Bajaj signature, of course. So the frame is all new. So is the engine. Uh, you see the typical box swing arm and now you have a monoshock at the rear preload adjustable of course and at the front are 37 millimeter forks and let's also take a look at the design so this is the f250 that's the branding at the rear so the f250 the f essentially stands for the fairing it's got that quarter fairing semi fairing whatever you might want to call it uh, that's a uh, design the, uh, that has been carried forward from the 220F so to say but it's an all new design of course it's much sleeker uh, the lines are much stronger uh, much more prominent and it looks much leaner as well you also get that belly pan and this is the only color that you can buy the F250 in from what I can uh, tell you right now so this is the red it's got in fact multiple shades of red this is a slightly brighter shade this is almost maroonish and then you get these graphics here as well you have these gray silver accents metallic accents here and that's the headlamp so that uh, twin vertical setup uh, for uh, what we saw on the 220 is gone now you get a bi-beam LED a projector bi-beam LED you get these boomerang shaped uh, LED daytime running lights as well and then you will see those same kind of graphics here on uh, the mud flap so you will see the ABS branding here but it comes with uh, single channel ABS, not dual channel ABS. Up front is a 300 millimeter disc, and at the rear is a 230 millimeter disc. And what's also important is look at the calipers. The Bibre is gone. What you get is Grimeca. It's an Italian brand. It was recently taken over uh, by Endurance Systems. Endurance Systems does uh, the suspension, the chassis for Bajaj, uh, the wheels as well, and uh, they are now also supplying the brakes. It's not Bibre anymore. Uh, speaking of wheels, these are lightweight wheels. You can see that endurance branding right there. Yeah, you can see that endurance branding right there. And uh, these wheels are shot with the Zapper FY2 tires from MRF. It's 180, 17 up front, or 130 at the rear, 17 inch of course. Now, no, there no down tube there. We're talking about the chassis. There's no uh, down tube there. But like I said, the engine is the stress member, of course. Uh, now that we have a little lesser crowd here, uh, again coming back to the fairing design, uh, you see these mesh panels but that's not a see-through mesh, uh, but that's again something that's taken uh, from the design scene on the previous generation pulsars. You see a similar mesh kind of pattern uh, out on uh, that panel as well and that's the tail section. Now you get a split seat, seat height is 795mm which should be uh, good for most riders. Pulsar obviously is a democratic brand. They want to make it accessible for riders of different shapes and sizes. And the 795mm should work really well. Now, moving on to the instrumentation. Now, this is something that I want your opinion on. Uh, I had said in my uh, in the spy shot video that it's going to be a three-pot layout. Sort of it is, but uh, no two LCDs. You only get one LCD here and you get all telltale lights here. You get a gear position indicator. You also get a distance to empty. But that's all the gimmicks that you get on this LCD. Uh, thankfully, you still get a big analog uh, tachometer or rev counter and that's an ode uh, to uh, you know, the performance or the Pulsar Maniacs, uh, so to say. So I'm glad that they've retained that as well. You have the RPM limit light, you have the ABS light, check engine light, oil, battery, etc. So all those telltale lights are up there and that's the key. Still laser cut key. Let's switch it on for our friends at the wheels here. And you also get a USB port here. So this USB port is uh, near the tank. So in case you want to mount the phone, uh, you know, somewhere on the handlebar, I don't know where you're going to do it on 
the two uh, the two F250. But yeah, if you mount it somewhere there, you have a USB port right here to charge. Uh, you still get a clip-on handlebar arrangement. It's not an adjustable clip-on uh, system, uh, but you still get that clip-on handlebar arrangement like the 250s. And uh, if you can see, uh, no real controls here for that LCD, and that's because it doesn't really get any riding modes for you to uh, to select, or it doesn't even get Bluetooth connectivity because Bajaj says it's probably not required on this category. Let me uh, know what you think about it. But yeah, controlling this LCD are these two switches right here. You also get that engine kill switch. All the switch gear is still like the Pulsar, but you see this nice two-tone arrangement, that uh, two-tone design that has been given to it. I think it looks quite good. Uh, the switch gear quality is also quite decent. But yeah, you can see these panel gaps here and there. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, uh, I don't know. Let me know what you think about it. I don't think it's a big concern. These are inconsistent. It's on both sides. I hope it doesn't rattle with time. You still get that 3D emblem for uh, the Pulsar and over to the original 220 when, or the original Pulsar when it came out. I think it looks quite nice. Uh, those graphics continue here. Uh, you don't get uh, a tank pad like you got on the 220F. Uh, there's no tank pad here, but I think it will be a part of the accessory list. Let's hope so. Uh, moving, on, moving on to the rear. That boomerang arrangement that we saw on the day, daytime running lights is something similar that you also get for the tail lights. And you'll see that it's got that nice stardust pattern. Uh, we saw something similar on the Mercedes-Benz E-Class when it first uh, came out in its long wheelbase after to India. And you know that stardust pattern, I think it looks quite nice. Let me know what you think. It creates a sort of a gradient. It looks quite nice. You also get a split uh, grab rail. So the split grab rail, this kind of tail light arrangement, the split tail light arrangement, it's signature pulsar. Then you get this floating panel right here uh, that houses the registration plate and the LED blinkers. So the LED blinkers, uh, you get LED blinkers uh, on both the bikes now. And uh, these, I think, look very similar to what we've seen in the KTMs. Looks quite nice, makes for a clean design. The wheel hugger, it's a two-piece unit. There's one floating panel here and one right here. So it's a two-piece design. Again, very neatly integrated, looks quite sporty. Speaking of sporty, you also get this uh, stubby exhaust and uh, you know someone's revving the bike at the rear so it sounds quite good. Let me just show it to you. Someone's been revving it. Yeah. Could you rev it a bit more? I think it sounds quite good. Uh, it's a signature Pulsar exhaust note. I hope the mic is catching all of that. So that's the N250. We are going to come to that in a bit. Going back to the 250, the F250 here. Uh, this one doesn't have the Sari guard, right? So this one doesn't have the Sari guard, but essentially this is where it will come out from. This is where it will be uh, mounted. Uh, the rear foot pegs. They're mounted very neatly onto the subframe. It's a tubular frame, like I told you. Uh, to access the rear seat, this is where you have uh, the key fob. Sorry, the keyhole for the rear seat. You get a main stand and a side stand on both. Like I said, uh, it's a five-speed gearbox that this engine is mated to, and you only get the tow shifter. Right, so let's also get to the naked, the N250. So they are not calling it the NS250, it's the N250. So let's get the common stuff out of the way so that we are not in the frame of our friends here. The tail is exactly the same as the 250F or the F250. So is the exhaust, so is all of this stuff at the rear. The difference, of course, is at the front. Right, so that is that's the front. Uh, it's got a very sharp headlight, right? Uh, it's got a very sharp headlight. It's got uh, two LED DRLs like we saw on the 250F, but it doesn't have that that boomerang shape, right? From the distance, it looks quite good. So yeah, I was wrong. So you get the the F250 in grey or red. And similarly, the N250 can also be had in grey or red. And this is what the red N250 looks like. And I think it looks quite good. Again, you get that 
by beam projector lamp uh, in this little in this little crevice that they've created here uh, you get these glossy black plastics on top and then this molded panel for the instrumentation so the instrumentation is exactly the same it looks a little bit better on uh, this motorcycle compared to the f250 and that's because if you see it's got a nice bezel-less design and it really comes out uh, stands out quite nicely on the naked uh, instead of the fed looks quite good the other design change of course is the handlebar gets a flat and wide handlebar to go with its street fighter nature or its street fighter positioning same usb port that we saw on the f250 as well same kind of switch gear backlit of course because bajaj loves doing that they pioneered that in india and people loved it and that's been uh, carried forward here as well uh, it's got the same forks it's got the same rear monoshock that's 37, uh, 37 millimeter forks up front non-adjustable and that's the monoshock adjustable for preload same frame same engine as the f250 this one also gets the main stand the side stand and the 300 mm disc really looks good how does it work how do these grimeca brakes work is something that we are going to find out very soon we will be riding these motorcycles uh, by the end of the week so you will see the uh, abs rings on both the ends but it is a single channel abs so that's the n250 for you this also has a lot of graphics here and there uh, a bit overdone to me looks a bit overdone to me especially on the red color i think the gray one really looks nice let me know what you think about it let me know what you think about the equipment about the specs were you expecting something more out of this machine uh, as far as pricing goes oh well there is uh, our friend pariche who is just giving us a good idea of what the seat height looks like like i told you it's a 795 millimeter seat height uh, pariche for our audience could you uh, please uh, tell us what your height is five foot eight so i think that gives you a fair idea of how this motorcycle fits right then continuing with the 250 uh, f or the f250 uh, so the tank capacity for both the motorcycles is the same it is 14 liters uh, my estimate was somewhere around 13 liters but it is 14 liters uh, we don't know what the range is going to be they have not uh, spoken about the advertised or the claimed fuel economy yet uh, but that's something that we'll find out very soon. We are going to be road testing this motorcycle by the end of the week. Uh, in terms of the pricing, uh, the 250F or the F250, of course, is the more expensive one. Uh, it is priced at 1.4 lakh rupees, while the Naked uh, is exactly 2,000 rupees cheaper. It is 1.38 lakh rupees. Let me know what do you think about the pricing. Let me know what color you like better with the two motorcycles. This is the black and gray combo. And the red I've already shown you. This is again the F250 in the red color. Let me know what is your favorite color. They haven't brought the gray and black combo on the 250. Oh, they have. That is the F250 with the gray and black combo. Not much crowd there. So let's take a look at that as well. Right then. Yeah, so let me know what do you think about the colors. I think the F250 looks the best in red and the Naked looks the best in that black and gray combo. So I think I've covered everything that was there to talk about the motorcycle. If you have any further queries about this bike or its Naked sibling, let me know in the comments. I will try to answer it as soon as possible. Hmm, interesting. So the rear foot peg doesn't get a rubber padding. The front one does. And uh, it doesn't look removable either. Right. That's that. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said, if you have any queries, put them in the comment section below. I'll join the discussion and I'll answer them for you. Uh, do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And do share this video with many of your friends who I'm sure were waiting to know more about the Pulsar 250. Thank you for watching.